as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirm the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer, which can, it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water. And you must make a sentence out of water, and you can change a sentence. In the winter of 1881, the sailing ship Laura was on a course from Liverpool to San Francisco. On the third day of the voyage, a fire broke out on board. Among those abandoning ship was the captain, Neil Carey. The water supply soon ran out, and the crew experienced the torments of thirst growing by the hour. Later, when they reached shore safely after three terrible weeks adrift at sea, the captain, a man with a very level-headed attitude towards events, described what had saved them. We were dreaming of fresh water, he said. We began to imagine that the water around the lifeboat was turning from ocean blue to the greenish hue of fresh water. I summoned up my strength and scooped some up. When I tasted it, the water was fresh. Well, take a famous event. When Jesus Christ turned water into wine, he didn't add some sugar or lactose, but he imparted an absolutely special property to the water. We have carried out many experiments on the effect that quite diverse factors have on samples of water. Magnetic fields, electrical fields, various objects, and also including a human presence and human emotions. And it became clear that positive and negative human emotions are the strongest element of influence. Professor Korotkov's laboratory has conducted numerous experiments on the effect of human emotions on water. A group of people were asked to project onto a flask of water in front of them very positive emotions like love, tenderness, and concern. Then, the flask was replaced with another one, and the people were asked to project emotions of a different type. Fear, aggression, hatred. After this, measurements were taken on the samples. The water exhibited changes that were clearly in one direction or another. So love increases water's energy levels and stabilizes the water, while aggressive emotions reduce the energy and make radical changes in the water. I hope to show people through my research that water has a memory of its own. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples, which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. With modern technology, it is possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used. Using structurized water makes vegetables ripen faster and increases the amount of useful microelements and vegetable proteins several fold. Uh, 
If we look at the shoots, the treated ones were long, even, and strong, while the untreated ones were short, thin, and weak. If we look at the plants today, those from the selected seeds have all ripened, but the ones from non-selected seeds have not. We have to say that using structurized water really does affect the growth of vegetables and fruits. For the purposes of irrigation, 20% less of this type of water is needed than when using ordinary water. No fertilizer was added to the soil or the water. The chemical composition remained the same, H2O. The only thing that had changed was its structure. At the present time, scientists can answer the question of how this happens, but science does not yet have an answer to the question of why. Depending on age, a human being is made up of 70 to 90 percent water. An adult drinks approximately 2.5 liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another 1.5 liters is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Water makes a long and difficult journey before arriving in our homes. It used to be common knowledge that a settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of miles using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water supply system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. Water from a water supply system which flows into our homes through pipes has various forms, crystals of various forms, but they are all deformed. That is, it may look like this. It can look like this or have these crystals in many other arrangements, but you won't see any symmetry or beauty. Water that flows in a floor panel heating system is devitalized and rotten. It sucks energy out of the people, plants, and animals living in that house. It actually steals the energy. It is well known that the water supply in many large cities is a closed loop system. After undergoing aggressive chemical purification and passing through powerful filters, the water in these systems is returned to our homes, still remembering the chemicals and the violence it was subjected to. Even stronger, however, is the informational pollution that the water accumulates as it flows down miles of long pipes through thousands and thousands of houses and apartments. We pollute water spiritually, and this happens on a huge scale. Why? The water adopts all of the hatred, all of the malice, the stress. The water is almost dead by the time it enters our body. Our Earth is a gigantic container of water in which all forms of life arose. And every living thing is itself essentially a container of water. With modern technologies, we can reach far into outer space. And as we attempt to discover life on other planets, the first thing we look for is water. There is no life on Earth without water. And one of the big questions is whether or not, in case that there should be comparable life on other planets, this would also be based on the presence of water. There is strong belief that the first living organisms were in the water, and only much, much later did organisms develop that could live outside of the water. I don't think that 
this is at all a coincidence. It is absolutely no accident that the opening lines of the Bible 